This question gives us the unit cell for this binary compound and asks us to determine its empirical formula. You'll notice that this unit cell has a bunch of oxygens in each of the four corners. In fact, that bunch turns out to be eight oxygen atoms exactly. As I showed in this slide, anytime you have a sphere located at one of the vertices of your unit cell, there's only one eighth of that sphere that's actually inside the unit cell. Therefore, only one eighth of each of the spheres at these vertices counts towards the empirical formula. So I have eight different spheres, and only one eighth of them count toward the total amount of oxygens in this formula. Furthermore, you'll notice that there's an oxygen that's completely inside the unit cell. That sphere, because the whole thing is inside the unit cell, counts completely and fully toward the final formula. Now let's see if we can examine our coppers. I have four individual coppers, and it looks like all four of them are completely within the unit cell. Now that we have all that information in our minds, let's do the math. I have eight oxygen atoms, but only one eighth of each one of those counts toward the, number, the total number of oxygens in the empirical formula. Separately, I also have one oxygen atom that counts completely toward the number of oxygens in the empirical formula. Eight multiplied by one eighth equals one, plus the additional oxygen ends up giving me two oxygens. I also have four individual coppers that are completely within the unit cell. So I've got a total empirical formula of copper 4O2. As we simplify that mathematically, it ends up coming to Cu2O. That is the correct empirical formula for this unit cell.